Namaste. I'm Dr. Supraja Chandrasekhar, Consultant Pediatric ICU Specialist at Columbia Asia Hospitals, Yashwanpur. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the pediatrician's perspective of what parents must know about COVID in children. Infections in children worry us all, as doctors and as parents. Now imagine a virus that has taken the entire world by storm. Of course, we are extremely worried about it. So let me start with some good news. We all know that the proportion of children as compared to adults who are affected by COVID is far less. The better news is majority of kids have a very mild or even no symptoms at all. However, recently, in the past few months, you must have read certain worrisome stories about COVID in children. Names like Kawasaki disease, hyperinflammatory syndrome, and pediatric multisystem disorder might be worrying you. So let me start with the basics of what is COVID and then we'll take you through this extremely rare condition of the hyperinflammatory syndrome as well. Commonly, in children, we get fever as part one of the symptoms of COVID. About 40 to 50% of children have fever. Now, often parents call me up and say, my child feels hot, doctor, I'm extremely worried, could this be COVID? And then I ask them, what is the temperature? Most of them don't know. I think it's very important for us to measure the temperature of children so that we clearly know if the child really has a fever or not. A simple digital thermometer like this would suffice. We need to use that at the axillary armpit and check the temperature. If it is 99.5 Fahrenheit or above, only then we call it a fever. So when your child feels hot, it's worth checking the temperature and if it is 98 and 97, I think we should wait. It's probably not a fever. Apart from fever, we have a whole lot of what we call upper respiratory symptoms like cold, cough, itchy throat or a sore throat also do occur in COVID in children as well as adults. But the important thing to remember is children present with a lot of tummy symptoms. Abdominal pain or tummy pain is an important symptom of COVID in children. Likewise, vomiting and loose throats, even if they have no fever at all. So if your doctor advises a COVID screening test for a child who comes with a lot of tummy pain and loose stools, he may actually be doing the right thing. We also have other non-specific symptoms like body pain, feeling very tired, apart from rashes. Different types of rashes have been described in COVID, which is part of usual viral symptoms in children. Some of them have very rare conditions like seizures as well. So now that we know the spectrum of common symptoms of children, it's very important for us to know what are the dangerous ones or the ones we need to worry about. So these are called the red flag signs. Any child with a fever that is just not coming down and it's very high grade, especially for three days or more, yes, that is a warning sign and we definitely need to get that checked by a doctor, preferably a physical examination. Secondly, a child who has severe tummy pain, not coming down, vomiting excessively, or even fast breathing. Now, fast breathing is very important. As children don't tell us about chest pain or difficulty in breathing, we can look at the movements of their chest or even the tummy. Little babies less than one year generally breathe at 40 breaths or 40 movements in one minute. Now, when this gets to one every second. That means the child is breathing at about 60 per minute. It is a worrying sign. Likewise, as the child gets older, they breathe lesser. So if they breathe one per two seconds, it should be fine. Anything faster than that, you need to discuss with your doctor. This is called tachypnea or fast breathing. So 
when children have very high grade fever, especially for more than three days, rashes all over the body, severe tummy pain, excessive vomiting, fast breathing, or very dull and lethargic in not taking food, these are red flags and warning signs that you need to talk to your doctor. Many of you have been worried about this Kawasaki-like syndrome and hyperinflammatory syndrome that you might have read on social media or in the newspapers. This is a new condition which has been described probably from April or May in countries across the world who have seen a high incidence of COVID-19 in children. Now what they notice is, although COVID was quite mild in children, a few weeks after the peak, they found children coming back with very high grade fever, rashes, tummy pain, and something called as shock. This they described as a Kawasaki-like illness because it resembles a previously known entity called Kawasaki disease. Now the most important thing which you need to know is, it is not common. This is in a very, very tiny proportion of children who have been exposed to COVID previously, either known or unknown. But it is important for us to be aware of this condition. Theories suggest that it is our body's immune system which is acting very well against the COVID which actually creates this condition of hyperinflammatory state. And as said before in our warning signs, children who have a very high grade fever, not touching the baseline, rashes over the body, looking very flushed, eyes becoming red, red lips, red tongue, with hands and feet going a little puffy, severe tummy pain, vomiting or loose tools, as well as lethargy can suggest this condition. So when any of these danger signs are present, you must discuss this with your doctor. Now let's look at what do we do when our child has fever. Probably I would say we do the same thing as we did last year. The fever management doesn't change. We, we first ensure that this is fever by measuring the temperature. We then remove excessive clothing, keep the child cool, give the weight-based dose of paracetamol and then we do two important things. We look for any warning signs or danger signs as I have described and later obtain a teleconsultation or probably take to the close-up fever clinic. Now if there are warning signs, we advise to go to the hospital which is nearest to you and get the child checked. However, if the child seems otherwise well and playful with no other warning signs, we could do a video or a teleconsultation. This is a service which is provided by most hospitals, private clinics, including the government sector. And like in our hospital, we do this very frequently. The next important thing that we need to remember is to isolate the child as far as possible from other people at home, especially the elders, because most viral fevers do nothing much in children. But when it comes to the vulnerable population, like the elders at home, they can get affected more severely. So a quick sum up, when you think your child is hot, take the temperature, keep the child cool, give the usual dose of paracetamol, look out for any warning signs, discuss with your doctor, and ensure that you isolate the child from the rest of the family, you can continue to take care of the child. Stay safe and stay happy.